Today we're going to be using some reclaimed pallet wood to create a French cleat wall for displaying some knickknacks. All right, let's get on with it. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So today is part five of my Ultimate Office Makeover video series. And today we are going to be focusing on the wall behind me where I use French cleats to create little display stands for the things that I want to show off. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days. Let's go ahead and get on with the build. The process starts by breaking down the pallet into individual planks, which I did off camera. I then removed all the nails and checked for other metal objects using a magnet. After all the nails were removed, I brushed the board free of any visible debris using a wire brush. With the boards debris free and metal free, I ran them through the planer to clean up each face. This is a rough operation as we will mill the board to final thickness in an upcoming step. After planing, I took the boards to the jointer and squared up one edge. With the edge cleaned up, I flattened one face of each board. I could have flattened the face while I was cleaning up the edge, but I found it faster to complete one operation before switching hand positions to another. With a clean edge and a flat face, I took the boards to the table saw and squared up the other edge. Then I ran the boards through the planer again to flatten the other face. I checked each board until they were all the same thickness, 12 millimeters in this case. With the boards milled to their final thickness, I moved on to stabilizing the cracks in the boards using some CA glue. I used Starbond medium thickness CA glue to fill the cracks in the board. I have found the medium thickness to be the perfect viscosity for filling voids in boards. It is thin enough to sink into the voids, but thick enough to stay in the cracks without running throughout the project. I flood the crack with the CA glue, give it a little bit of time to sink into the gap, and then I hit it with the accelerator, which causes it to cure. In some cases, it requires multiple applications of the CA glue to completely fill the gap. I will leave a link to the Starbond CA glue in the description below, as well as all the other products that I used throughout the video. Once stabilized, I tilted the table saw to 45 degrees and cut a bevel on each board. The bevel makes the cleat, which mates to the opposing face. For more information about French cleats, I highly recommend you check out Chris's videos from A Glimpse Inside. He's done a ton of videos on French cleats and I found them very useful for this project. I will link them above and below. With all of the boards cut to the final thickness and have the bevel, I moved on to cutting them to the appropriate length. In this case, I used a stop lock on my miter saw to ensure all of the boards were the same length. I used some scrap wood from the bin in the corner to create the length using a piece of walnut, and then I had a little piece of maple that I used as the actual stop lock. To ensure all the boards are the same length, I would place the board against the stop block and then using the miter saw, cut each board to the same size. I set my stop block at 36 inches so that I could span two studs on the wall for each board. Following Chris's advice, I knocked about a 16th of an inch off the end of the cleats so that the sharp end would not splinter over time and potentially lose some of its holding power. To start the finishing process, I sanded each board starting at 60 grit, then 80, and then 120. 
I finished at 120 because that is sufficient for the finish that we're going to apply in the next step. I finished the boards by spraying them with a semi-gloss lacquer finish. I did three coats of the lacquer finish. I prefer lacquer over polyurethane because it dries more quickly and I can get on with the project more rapidly. Ultimately, the choice is yours. After finishing the boards, I took them to the bench and marked out two lines 16 inches apart. I then pre-drilled countersunk holes for the screws that will hold the boards to the wall. Pro tip, I used the eraser to remove the pencil lines from the board. In doing so, I had very little cleanup once the boards were installed. With the boards ready to go, I took them to the office and started to install them. At this stage, it was pointed out to me that I drilled the holes on the wrong side of the boards and finished the wrong side of the boards. Check the bloopers at the end of the video for a more spirited response to my mistake. I regrouped, re-drilled the holes on the correct face and finished the other side of the boards. Getting on with the project, I marked the lines where the studs were on the wall and began installing the boards. I used spacers to ensure each board was exactly the same distance from the previous board. I found this very helpful and really sped the process along very quickly. Big Red was kind enough to hold a board on the side as well so that each one of the cleats was aligned vertically. All right, well, that was a build. I hope you enjoyed it. A lot of fun, super easy to do, highly recommend it. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but please leave your comments down below. And tell us why, so we can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. All right, again, thank you so much for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired. Those around so it's the right way. Turn them on the wrong side. Hmm, that sucks.